Happy holidays. So welcome or welcome back to Care Life Podcast. My name is Kenz Rock and this is our Christmas special 12 days, 12 guests people. This is 12 days of Christmas. And we have been at this since the 12th of December. It will end on the 23rd of December. So stay tuned for each and every day when I upload a new episode that I've interviewed a brand new guest. And today's guest is an amazing woman, a fantastic lady, and she impact your life in one way or another, just like the others have. But before we begin, please remember to follow me and the podcast on all social media. And also subscribe to the podcast so that you know when we next the link will be in the description down below and also the links to the guest social media platforms or websites will be linked in the description too so ladies and gentlemen our guest today is a mother of two daughters and a son who are intentionally raised as equals in her home and you might wonder Kenzie why are you saying this it's normal for parents to raise their kids as equals but as you go on with the interview you'll actually understand why this is important to our guest today she was born in Zimbabwe Africa and she was also raised there but now she lives in Canada where she is happily married and has a family she is a woman with a powerful voice both on stage and on paper and her message is creating an international movement of mothers who understand that the lessons they instill on their generation will change the world forever ladies and gentlemen joining us from canada is francesca mandeya thank you phyllis for having me it's a pleasure to have you on this amazing holiday special 12 days of christmas a pleasure too from here so let's begin by you telling us your story who is francisca mandeya wow <laughs> so francisca francesca mandeya Mm-hmm. I am Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. I was born girl number three in a succession of girls. And uh, I was given a name, Ndaisi Way. Mm-hmm. It's a loaded indigenous name asking why had I known. So I came into this world mm-hmm. unwanted as a girl child because a boy was expected. Uh I was loved, but it was just another gender that was expected. So I was born into this energy of, you are not enough. And my mother expressed the pain of not managing to have a boy through naming me. So you see, society has this tendency of valuing boys more than girls. And maybe somebody who's listening can relate to this, but that's my Mm -hmm. story. I took punches for being smarter than some boys in primary school. And in secondary school, a young man felt entitled to my body. And as the temperature of my body was rising, it wasn't out of desire, but out of fear. And I I was asking myself, by keeping quiet, am I giving this boy permission to violate me? No. Mm -hmm. I was an innocent girl. And when I went to work, the manager groped me. When I got married, it took me 12 years to extract myself from a toxic abuse environment. And I was curious, is this my life as a woman, as a girl? From my childhood to my womanhood, boys and men are treating me this way. No, I have to stand up and I have to speak up. And I began to know that I am an equal human being mm-hmm. with equal human rights, deserving equal treatment. And so that's how I came to write my book, Mother Behold Thy Son, because I did not want my son to be like any of those boys or men who violated me. And so my role was telling him all these stories to say, when you do like those boys did, girls and women will not be free. And it's not right. And so you ask who I am. I am a mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, three children, two beautiful daughters, 
pursuing their passions in telecom and clinical psychology. Mm -hmm. And my son is a pilot. I raise them as equals in my home mm -hmm. because I know the pain of not being treated equally. And I wanted to make a difference beginning in my own home. So my mm -hmm. boy can cook, can clean, can do anything that the girls can do. And my girls mm -hmm. can do anything that the boys can do in terms of tasks. There's nothing that was, this is for the girls, this is for the boys. So, yes, I'm a mom and I'm a proud mom. I'm an mm -hmm. author, as I've already shared. I'm a coach. Uh, what I've done over the years is taking lessons from life and wanting mm -hmm. to make a big difference um, in the world, but starting with a family at a time. So I'm a solution focused and mental fitness coach, and I mm -hmm. help uh, people move from a place of self-sabotage to a place of self-mastery, or to be able mm -hmm. to change a reality that they don't want to. So I want to end here for now mm -hmm. and hear from you. Fran, it's amazing how your life has been, even though you had some points that were sad when you were growing up. It's great that you're trying to instill these morals in your children right now so that they don't have a life that you had. And you have mentioned that you have a book, Mother Behold Thy Son. Could you tell us in depth or in a brief way what the book is all about? Yeah, so this book is... is me talking to my son, mother behold thy son. When I am done raising my boy, what kind of men do I want to behold? To behold is to admire. So as a mom, after having those experiences of not being wanted from birth and being treated the way I was, which was mainly violent, disrespectful ways, I was wondering, what's my boy going to be like? And so I let my pain teach me. And so if you look at chapter one, for instance, it talks about uh, male subjugation and female silence, male entitlement. So how boys and men feel entitled to our bodies, even without our permission, they feel like they mm -hmm. can just do what they want. So I told my story of that boy. It wasn't one, actually. It was four boys that violated me throughout high school. Mm -hmm. And I shared those stories with my boy and other boys at large, other sons who want to listen to me as a mother to say, mm -hmm. when you do that, this is how mama feels and it's not right. So that's chapter one, male entitlement and female silence. For the most part, mm -hmm. as females, Girls and women, we keep quiet when we are violated. We are afraid. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get blamed for saying that we have been violated. Keep it in the family. He's the breadwinner. Oh, that's what marriage should be. Hold the mm -hmm. knife by the hand. So I was teaching my son not to be like those men. And also my girls to know that they can have a voice and other women who are still stuck in abuse, who feel like mm -hmm. they don't have a voice. So by vocalizing what happened to me, my pain, I am speaking not only to my son, to my daughters mm -hmm. and to women like me, who know that what is happening to them is not right. They feel it deep in their heart. They know, mm -hmm. even if they may not be empowered in terms of rights. So to give them a voice or to give them permission to also tell their story, which may be different from me, but mm -hmm. maybe simple. So I was a student mom, at, that's chapter mm -hmm. two. And I warn every girl that do not be like me. I was a student mom, pregnant at 21, while in university, had my first child, pregnant at 22, had my second child while still doing my degree. It wasn't mm -hmm. easy. But as a young woman, I was not empowered. 
So I kept having children. I was not on birth control. That did not mm-hmm. exist in my vocabulary because I was raised Christian. Mm-hmm. I respect Christian values. But when it comes to practical life, sometimes we cannot follow the Ten Commandments as is. That doesn't mean mm-hmm. we are condemned. We can rise up from being a sinner, from falling off the wagon. You can mm-hmm. still um a great person. So the lesson from there was I still went on to have my kids anyway, but it wasn't mm-hmm. an easy goal. But that was the introduction for me uh, to unconditional love, to the love of a mother that I am mm-hmm. so proud that I decided to have my kids even while I was a student because I've known love, I've known sacrifice. And that love mm-hmm. of a mother is what drives me to want to create this change, to empower young women. Those that will listen, don't walk the road that I walked. And to mothers to say, what are we doing with our power of love, with our unconditional Mm -hmm. love, to try and change these relations between boys and girls and men and women. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other chapter, why was I born a girl is just questioning all this injustice. Why does it happen to us? Chapter mm-hmm. four is very, because I go into my personal family story. Very mm-hmm. painful and very embarrassing, by the way, to come out in the open and speak about the injustices that happened in your mm-hmm. intimate circle. But I dared to do that because we have mm-hmm. to change this culture. So, I talk about inheritance and how as a girl child, when my parents died, Mm -hmm. my mother died first and she left uh, some inheritance. She left it to the two boys, my mom. Mm -hmm. And my father said, no, I have eight children. I don't have two children. Mm -hmm. So we are to redistribute this wealth from mama and give each child an equal share. That was amazing. My father was a feminist without a doubt. He treated mm-hmm. us girls as the same. He showed it by sharing wealth. So for me, that was the family culture, right? Then my father mm-hmm. dies. It was a different story. He had rural businesses and quite a bit of assets for somebody um, in the rural area. And the family decided that the girls were not worth any inheritance. And so we're Mm -hmm. told, focus on getting married, you're not getting anything. My brother, younger than me, is the one that got inheritance. And that was Mm -hmm. the time when I really needed help most, when I really needed my parents most. When I was struggling as a student mom, I had made the wrong decisions and I was married and I was troubled. That's Mm -hmm. when I really needed only to be told, focus on getting married. Mm -hmm. You don't give the family inheritance. So I, I, I get into these issues because I know that my family is not alone, but people who keep quiet in their homes and pretend everything is well when it is not well. So I share that to speak to those uh, who want to hear this message that we must change this because being born a girl is not a sin and being born a boy is not anything special. They're just a child born of a woman. And everyone deserves inheritance. Mm -hmm. So I I went on to talk about uh, a whole lot of things, how I used music as a vehicle for social change. I sang Mm -hmm. with my kids because practicing equality is one thing. Mm -hmm. Saying let's be equal is another, but practicing it is another thing. So I was scared. I was born into this family where the gender dynamics are like, uh, boys are kind of more important. Now I want Mm -hmm. to change that, but that's all I know. How do I actually change it to be something different if I didn't leave it? So I had to be creative. I used my mbira. It's an African uh, instrument, Mm -hmm. mbira. And I sang with my kids to kind of make a commitment to say, I am saying it, that you are Mm -hmm. equal, but I want to seal the agreement by making music 
and giving you the power as a girl child to say, I am equal. The power as mm-hmm. a boy child to say, I am equal and I deserve uh, access to rights to education, to food, to registration, all the rights that my children were um, are entitled to. I taught mm-hmm. them through song. Make them make me accountable as a parent to say, mom, you're saying you're raising us equal. Are you mm-hmm. actually doing it? So I crafted that special relationship because I knew from pain that I don't want these ones to even fight about inheritance. I don't want them to think they are any more important than the other. Mm-hmm. And especially my because it was just one boy in a family of three powerful women. I was scared mm-hmm. for him. If we are not careful, we are going to vent all our negative emotions about men on this planet. What does he know? What did he do? You know, that narrative of men are dogs, men are trash. As a mother, mm-hmm. it began to scare me that if we keep those narratives as women, what are we saying to our sons who are also just born as boys? Mm-hmm. So mother, behold, thy son wants to empower the boy child mm-hmm. to be able to speak out, to express his pain, and not worry that he will be laughed at because people will say he's not a man. So I also question, mm-hmm. what is man in mother behold? So there are a lot of messages that I have to share with the world. But mm-hmm. as I spoke to my son, I will, I'm hoping that, um, I was hoping that I would be speaking to other sons and mm-hmm. to girls and women because I am the voice that's speaking and um, the example to my children and any other women who may be oppressed. So I want to end there. Uh, There's a lot more, including action items in chapter seven. I don't just write about it. I then say, okay, we have a global goal, gender equality, gender equality by 2030. That's high Mm -hmm. up there. How do I bring that global goal, gender equality, into the home? So I took all the targets from that global goal Mm -hmm. and brought them into the home and started asking uh, families in terms of action, where is your family in terms of gender equality? Mm -hmm. What specific actions are you taking for every target, like end all discrimination uh, of girls and women, what is your family doing? Share the work uh, in the home. Is your family doing it? So Mm -hmm. practical steps towards making the home more equal, more loving, and more free. Fran, your book is something that a lot of people out there are looking for because like you have mentioned, it's to empower both girls and also boys. When it comes to domestic and gender-based violence in women, women, when they get assaulted or violated, they tend not to talk about it because, once again, nobody listens to them or nobody takes action towards it. And when it comes to men, because of the hate that this woman feels, she just takes the anger out of all men, yet there are amazing people out there who would love and care for them. So I think that this book is something that people should actually read because it's an empowering book and it's a powerful book and it will put you in the situation where you think once again, hey, we are all humans and we need to treat each other correct. We need to treat each other with equality and we need to love each other because the only difference that we have when it comes to men and women is that God gave us Besides that, yes. no, neither of us is a hyena when another is a cat. Neither of us is a tree when another is soil. We are basically humans. The only difference is that you have your own organs, I have mine, and that's the only difference. But when it comes to everything else, we are all similar in God's eyes. So, Frank, thank you so much for giving us this book. It's an amazing and powerful book. But moving on, you mentioned that you are a mental fitness coach and a certified solution-focused coach, yes? Yes, yes. <laughs> so what drove you into the life of coaching? The needs to see change. 
the need to see myself first, be it my best. Mm -hmm. The need to transform, knowing that I am meant to do more. I am mm -hmm. meant to leave a mark. I am meant to be the legacy. So I needed the tools to be able to claim the results that I know I want to produce in the world. Mm -hmm. So what coaching taught me um, is that we have a desire to be someone or to see something, mm -hmm. or we are dissatisfied about something in life. That is the mm -hmm. D that I was put in the coaching formula. So D mm -hmm. stands for desire or dissatisfaction. So mm -hmm. when we have that, the next step is to say, what do I want to see? Which is the vision. That's the mm -hmm. V in the coaching formula. So what do you want to see? I want to see mothers enjoying uh, watching their boys and girls living equally. Um, mm -hmm. When mothers do that as a collective, it means if my daughter gets married to her son, she is mm -hmm. going to leave. If my son gets married to uh, her daughter, they are going to leave mm -hmm. equally. So I had this vision. If we all raise our children as equals, the world is going to be more peaceful. So that was the big vision for me. But how mm -hmm. do I actually get people to, to experience that change? What do I need? So for me, that was the vision. And then mm -hmm. it's not enough to just have a vision while you're sitting in your house to say, oh, I envision boys and girls being equal, you know, and everything is so ideal and there's peace and happiness. Mm -hmm. What do you is the next step? The vision is there. So that's the FS part of the coaching formula. So now mm -hmm. we have B times the V times the FS. FS mm -hmm. standing for first steps. You have to move. What is it that you can do to make that vision a reality? Mm -hmm. So for me, maybe it means having the skills or writing the book. That's a tool. That's my first step towards the change that I want to see in the world. And mm -hmm. then it's not enough to end at first steps because we have what we call resistance. Resistance to change. So there mm -hmm. you are dreaming all things. You are dissatisfied. You have this vision and you have started working towards your vision. But there is resistance in your head. Mm -hmm. Some coach calling it limiting beliefs. I am not particularly attached to that term, but what limits us, what stops us from moving forward and creating the change we want is we have voices in our head. Francesca, mm -hmm. you are just that you are a girl from Weta. What can you change? Surely you want to change the world. You, you just a woman. So mm -hmm. we have those voices. You're not enough. You're ugly, you're dark. Those are messages that we were told when we were um, growing up, especially the mm -hmm. dark girls. I, I do that. So all those messages may come to you. You're not enough. Who do you think you are? You're so, you, now you think you're Oprah. You see? So all those messages can bring you down. So mm -hmm. your resistance to change has to be greater. It has to be less. Okay. Your desire times your vision times mm -hmm. your first step. Yeah, I'll repeat that. So uh -huh. your desire times your vision times mm -hmm. your first steps must all be greater than your resistance. So mm -hmm. once this of, of, your, of your experience is greater than resistance, then you know you are pushing past resistance and you will actually get to write the book. You will actually get to do the workshop. You will actually mm -hmm. get on the same interview with Phyllis because you know you are enough. You have a gift and you want to share it to the world and you know that one family at a time, you will make a difference. So I went into coaching to acquire the skills so that I would mm -hmm. use what I know to get it out of people, use my writing skills, use my singing mm -hmm. skills, use my talking skills. A difference. Maybe somebody who's listening would 
oh, I didn't have that perspective. I didn't mm-hmm. know that I could spot my abuse. Now they do. So after that, my classmates from Solution Focused, which is by Ericsson mm-hmm. International, they invited me to another coaching, mm-hmm. which is uh, mental fitness or through positive intelligence. And that's the best gift that I've ever received in my life. When I think of transformation and when I think of the tools that I have acquired over my life um, mm-hmm. as a facilitator, as a trainer, as a teacher, as, as an author, as a coach, this skill set of being a mental fitness coach is the best ever. Mm-hmm. So what it is teaching me is there are two perspectives in life. Mm-hmm. There is the saboteur perspective where you self-sabotage. Mm-hmm. You have a negative mindset. Everything that happens to you in life is bad. You judge it as bad. And so you are hijacked emotionally in anger, in sadness, in frustration, in negative attitude, in judging yourself, judging other people, and judging life negatively. Mm-hmm. So that's one perspective of life. And then the other perspective is you have a positive mindset. Anything that happens in life, you say there's a reason for it happening. If you believe in mm-hmm. God, you say, oh, this is God's plan. So you are positive. And, and you, you are peaceful, you are Happy, you flow, there's no force, there's no aggression. It's just ease and flow, ease and grace. Mm-hmm. That perspective is the sage perspective, the perspective of wisdom. That wisdom that comes from your older, wiser soul. So what it mm-hmm. has taught me is we have a choice. Either to be in saboteur perspective where we are, we have a negative mindset. Mm-hmm. Or we have uh, we are in sage perspective where we have a positive mindset. We are not able to just do it from ourselves because we've been so used to our ways of sabotaging ourselves. But mm-hmm. we can get to be mentally fit to exercise our brains so that we change our self-sabotaging ways and become empowered to operate more from a positive mindset. So I'm looking at my life. If I was stuck in victimhood, I was abused, you know, from my childhood to my womanhood. I'm so helpless. Help me. You know, I I can't get out. I can't. I can be stuck there. Mm -hmm. Or I can say pain is my lesson. I stayed on victim street for so long. I'm a victim myself because I can get better. I can do better. So you see mm-hmm. the perspectives. And we have mm-hmm. people like that. They are forever drowned in, in victimhood because they are not empowered. Well and good. But some will be empowered and still choose to stay in victimhood. So mm-hmm. what I tell people is to say there are two perspectives and you can choose. So uh, it takes some trainings which is what mm-hmm. I do. I help people to get there where you start exercising your brain and what it does, what mental fitness does, it actually rewires mm-hmm. your brain, changes the way you're doing, doing things so that you access your wisdom more and act from a point of love, love of self, mm-hmm. love of others, love of life, and you then always produce positive results in your relationship, in your performance, inner peace and happiness, you can actually Mm -hmm. be happy while in a storm. You can be happy while COVID is going on. You can be happy while you're grieving, difficult Mm -hmm. as it may be, but you will train your brain that life happens for a reason. And there's always a gift and opportunity in anything that happens Mm -hmm. to me. So that's how I am using myself and I'm still a student. I'm still growing. But mm-hmm. I have other students that have come back to me and say, Coach, things are changing and I never want to go back to the person that I was. I'm now a gift to those that, that meet me. I have text evidence of that. Mm-hmm. So this is what I have to offer. 
things. That's amazing, Fran. And what is one thing you wish you would have known before you began your career? Oh my goodness. I wish I had known that my talking was mm -hmm. not a negative thing. Because I was brought down so much by that label. She's talkative, she's disruptive, she's mm -hmm. this. But that energy, that's a gift. My talkativeness mm -hmm. is a gift. And I refuse to take it as a negative thing. I say mm -hmm. to myself now, I was given the gift of speech. Because when I speak, I hope that I am motivating, I am inspiring, or I'm transforming some, someone using my gift of speech. So I wish mm -hmm. I had known that way back in my life, when people were bringing me down and labeling me as talkative mm -hmm. and dismissing me as a human being. That's amazing that that is one thing you would have known because being talkative and speaking out your ideas and your views about the society is not actually a bad thing. And it's one thing that people tend to forget that if you talk, that you are maybe viewing views that people won't like, you're, viewing, you're telling views of, matters that people don't want to hear it's okay if they don't want to hear there's somebody out there who is listening to you and if it's something you think the society won't take action mm -hmm. of there is somebody somewhere else in a different society who will actually listen and take heed to whatever you're saying so that's amazing that that is the one thing you wanted to know before you began your career and i'm pretty sure you already know that right now and that's why you wrote this book and you're appearing everywhere as a speaker to empower other women and other men in their lives and societies. So what are some of the great resources that have helped you along the way as a coach? Um, so when you say resources, obviously the institutions where I have attended school had a mm -hmm. rich curriculum that equipped me to work on myself first and then mm -hmm. um, to, to then think about changing other people. So, um, like I said, that formula of coaching that I shared mm -hmm. already, that's a resource. If you understand that if you want to change your life, you begin by um, spelling out what it is you are dissatisfied about or what it is you desire. You may not be dissatisfied, but you know you want more. So it's mm -hmm. being clear about what is it that you desire or what is it that you are dissatisfied about? So then it means that you desire something else other than where you are. And then you, you bring forth the vision or you spell out the vision. What is it that you want to see? Which reminds mm -hmm. me, as I speak to you, I'm actually looking at my vision board, which I made mm -hmm. in 2017. Mm -hmm. And 2020, I'm ticking everything, almost everything. At the mm -hmm. top of that vision, it's written Pride of Africa. In 2017, mm -hmm. I didn't know I would be speaking to Africa through you, but I proclaimed okay. it right at the top of my vision board, Pride mm -hmm. of Africa. Next to that is life coach. I wasn't a coach in 2017. I couldn't even afford to pay for the course. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't have the means. I was still educating my three children. I had no money mm -hmm. for me, but I did it. Next to Life Coach, there is a book. I was mm -hmm. not an author in 2017. I had been rejected when I submitted a, a, a script, a book with 60,000 words. And they say, Francesca, why don't you stick mm -hmm. to academic writing? Creative writing is mm -hmm. not your forte. Mm -hmm. I was an author in 2017, but today I'm an author. Hard work, dream big. So what I'm trying to say is these are resources that I have embraced as I got coached by other people and mm -hmm. um, began to coach other people and designed my own course and found that it's important that if you have a vision, for me, putting it on a board and saying what you want, even before it mm -hmm. has happened. This is what I buy. So now suddenly 
I'm looking at my 2017 vision board. I'm like, tick, 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 tick. Almost everything has happened except mm-hmm. getting out of debt, which is something that I'm working on. But I know I am in debt because I paid the fees for a pilot, which is over mm-hmm. $85,000. So my debt mm-hmm. is not bad debt. It's energy flow. I gave my, my child his wings to fly. Mm-hmm. And so that's the only thing that's on my vision board that I have not cleared. I don't want to owe anybody anything. So what I'm mm-hmm. trying to say sharing my life like this is these tools, they are only tools uh, that will help us if we use them. Mm-hmm. So that formula I can give someone D times V times FS uh, has to be greater than um, R, which is resistance. But mm-hmm. you can stay with that formula and sit on it. Or you can mm-hmm. say, oh, Fran said, if I'm dissatisfied, I can actually write down what is it that I'm dissatisfied about. And then I can actually mm-hmm. say, what have you seen? And get a board and start putting pictures, right? Mm-hmm. And then I don't, I can actually say, after putting these pictures, what small action or what small three actions can I begin to implement towards that vision? Mm-hmm. So you see, um, those are some of the tools that I got. But the biggest tool for transformation is Mm -hmm. ourselves. This institution called the individual. That's where Mm -hmm. we have to do the work. People see me changing from positive intelligence. They're like, Fran, what's going on with you? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. How come you don't get angry anymore? How come you don't get ticked off when you tease you anymore? Mm -hmm. No. Now operating from a positive mindset. If you're going to come with negative energy, I am not allowing you to to project your negativity and offload it on me. I'll be in Mm -hmm. my sage. Totally alive that anything negative does not stay here. I don't keep my hand on the stove. I keep Mm -hmm. my hand off the stove. I take care of me. My perspective, I strive all the time to be positive. Yes, I may fall and be hijacked by negative emotions, but I Mm -hmm. am aware and I can get off. I think I want to stop talking so I can give you time to interview me. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. I love when my guests talk in depth about themselves Mm -hmm. and their career. And you have mentioned about your vision board and your positive attitude in life. And it's actually something that I do personally, but... The vision board, when it comes to me, I actually call it my master list and I have it in a notebook that I carry each and every day. A notebook that I don't write anything that doesn't have a major importance to me. I don't even pluck out papers from that notebook and I write a master list on it, which is like a vision board mm-hmm. to me. And each and every day, whatever I'm doing in life, when I realize that, oh my, whatever I've done today was on my vision board, I take it out and I make sure I'll redo it again so that... It, it's not an illusion to me. And when it comes to my sage moments, I actually call it my Zen moments when I I am in balance mm-hmm. with myself. My positive energy and my negative energy are in balance. And no matter how, mm-hmm. tra- how you try to shake it up, you will never, ever, ever go into my barriers of positivity. When they are up, there's mm-hmm. no way they're coming down. And that's amazing that you two are doing this. And I'm pretty sure a different majority of people from around the world do this too. Some may have the vision board, some have their sage moments, others may have some things that help them along the way to keep a positive attitude and to move forward. And that is great, Fran, that you're doing this. So moving on, along the way, Fran, when either in your life or in your career, what has been your biggest failure and what have you learned from it? (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) <laughs> okay, my, my biggest failure was mm-hmm. was relationships. I think when I think about um the conversations that I have around lessons learned, uh yeah. it's really um I failed myself because I thought I was worthless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how that manifested was being in relationships that did not honor who I am. 
And so when you're in relationships that don't honor who you are, that's when Mm -hmm. you are abused. That's when you are silenced. That's when you are a doormat. And Mm -hmm. even as I was talkative, I could not speak for seven years about what was going on with me. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's not my career, but it's Mm -hmm. my whole life. That's where I feel I failed. Um, But what I like about that failure Mm -hmm. is now that I'm here and now that I have the best relationships that brings out the best in me, I can only Mm -hmm. look back and say, wow. All those failed relationships where I did not value myself enough as a woman. And I believed all the lies that were told about me being dark and ugly, me being um, not woman enough to keep a man. Mm-hmm. You know, all those lies, I believed them because I didn't have a great sense of self. So, Failing myself that way taught me. I learned the hard way from failing a lot of times that I am actually enough. Mm-hmm. But I had to take the heat. I had to experience the failure. And, mm-hmm. and failure to the point of losing my job following a relationship. Mm -hmm. I followed my heart and I lost my job as a director Mm -hmm. because my being was always defined by who I am with in terms of a man. I was chasing marriage. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be married married because society values women when they are married. Mm -hmm. So that's the greatest failure for me. But the last one, the last relationship, like where I lost everything when Mm -hmm. I was chasing for a marriage is when I learned the most. I almost took my life because I hit Mm -hmm. rock bottom. And then from there, that's when I said no more. I am worth being me, whether I am with a man or not, I am worth living. My life is worth living. So Mm -hmm. I am just grateful to God for giving me a chance and helping me to make a U-turn when I was about to take a bottle of codeine and cough syrup and say goodbye to life. Mm -hmm. And I always speak to my kids about it, that it was a very emotionally difficult time. So yeah, my failure was Regulating my emotions, not thinking I'm enough, but I've since turned it into the biggest victory ever. I love myself and I am with a man who loves me, who lets me be. I'm a feminist and unapologetically so. Mm -hmm. A feminist who believes that men are important. I don't bash men. I come from a man. I'm a mother of a man. I'm a sister of a man. I was born of a man, Mm -hmm. but I'm a feminist. And my feminism is just that boys and girls, men and women are equal. And yeah, I think I've said a lot and uh, I want to give you a chance to ask (laughs) me. That's okay. To know your question, because I think I went on and on. (laughs) That's okay, Mm -hmm. Fran. And to whoever is listening to this right now, you have to remember that hitting rock bottom does not mean you have to stay there. Because if you hit rock bottom, you can't go any lower. So the only place you have to go is back up. And that is what yes, Fran yes. did for herself. She went back up. Because when you hit rock bottom, there is no way you can go any lower. And if there is one thing that people tend to forget is that their failures are part of them. Failures will help you grow. Failures will help you become a better person. But you should never let your failure describe who you are. Because if you let failure Mm -hmm. describe who you are, you can tell yourself, Phyllis, who am I? I'm Phyllis. I failed in my high school. I failed in my university. 
and I failed in life. But there's another person who will stand by and say, I am Phyllis. I may have failed in my school. I may have failed in my life. But today I'm doing powerful things to other people. Those are two different people. The first person let failure describe who she is. But the second, mm -hmm. it, she allowed failure to build her. She let failure help her grow. And that is something that people should always remember. That even when you fail, you can be a better person. You don't know what will happen to you tomorrow. You don't know what will happen to you the next minute. You might think that nothing is going your way right now. But in the next hour or two, or maybe in a day, a month, or a few years, it might change all around and bring some positivity and some great, great things in your life. And you should never give up. And Fran never gave up. Although she was about to, she saw the light and she never gave up. And I'm very glad, Fran, that you're here with us today, despite all that you went through. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis. Yeah. So as we move on, who are three people, only three people who have been influential to you in your life? <laughs> only three. Yeah, my only mother. three. <laughs> yeah. My mother, Lucia. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucia means light. Mm -hmm. Forever the light of my life. And may her soul rest in peace. My mm -hmm. father, Ignatius. Ignatius means fire. Mm -hmm. When I introduce myself to people, you ask me who I, I, I am. Mm -hmm. I think I made an omission. I say I am the daughter of light and fire, or fire and light. Those are my parents. Mm -hmm. That's where I come from. The most influential ever in my mm -hmm. life. My next book, Racial Equality, is dedicated to them. And I want to show the world who they were because they, they are not known, but they are my heroes. So mm -hmm. those are the first two. The second one, goodness me, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, third one. If I want to be honest, mm -hmm. um, there's a tie on, on number three. Mm -hmm. But I will talk about... Um, Tata Mandela, for mm -hmm. his ability to forgive, his capacity to forgive. Mm -hmm. And as I say that, I don't put him on a pedestal as a perfect human being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But an African icon, um, he's his ability to to forgive and his humility is something that inspires me and whatever i do whoever i become um i hope that i can take some of the lessons from his life what advice friend would you give a man or woman out there who is going through domestic and sexual violence or maybe discrimination or violation? Um, find your voice. Mm -hmm. Use your voice. Go to a safe place. And from there, use your voice. It is okay to go against family who's abusing mm -hmm. you. It's okay to go against a spouse who's abusing you. Silence can only kill us. That's amazing, Fran. And there's always one question that I've always asked a lot of people who I meet and I feel like they're in a toxic situation because people say that if you love someone or your family, you have to fight for it. But if you're getting hurt, by the same people you love, is it worth fighting for really? Because some people might think that you're in a relationship that where you're getting beaten, where you're getting violated, where you're getting mistreated, and just because you love this man or woman that you think you'll persevere and that you'll live strong and keep quiet about it, that's not okay because the more you keep quiet about it, the more you not talk about it, it's the same way this person will see you as quote unquote weak. They will use this as a means to destroy who you are. And in the long run, you'll forget that 
I'm a human being too, and this person is mistreating me, but I'm allowing them to because I'm not speaking out. And it's great, Frank, that that is the advice I've given them. Find your voice, speak out. Don't allow somebody to quiet down your flame and to quiet down your voice just because they are, A, stronger than you, two, they might define themselves as a stronger gender than you are, or they might be the only person you have in your life. If this man or woman is the only person you have in your life, the moment you walk out is the time you realize that there are other people who love you. If your parents are the ones mm -hmm. who are mistreating you, the moment you walk out is the time you realize that, hey, other family members value me for who I am. So Fran, thank you very much mm -hmm. for giving that as a very strong advice because it's something that a lot and a lot of people tend to forget from whichever part of the world they are from. And mm -hmm. how has this journey, both as a coach, as an author, everything in your life, how has it shaped you to who you are today as Francesca Mandeya? Yeah, the journey has been uh, full of lessons because now I, I, I have learned to reframe and not to be stuck in negativity. If you had asked me, I would have been stuck in victim mode, but um, the journey has unfolded the way it was meant to unfold mm -hmm. by my God. So I have gratitude for the journey. Um, I have gratitude for my mom and my dad who created me. I have gratitude for the boys and men who taught me that I need to speak up through violating mm -hmm. me. I have mm -hmm. gratitude for them. Mm -hmm. I have gratitude for the father of my children for giving me three beautiful children. Mm -hmm. who look like me and him. Mm -hmm. And the journey has taught me to love him and not to bash him. I'm not with him, but I'm not going to forget the gift that he gave me of three beautiful children. And I wish him well in his life. So the journey has taught me to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. As a woman, what narrative am I pushing about men? Have I myself been perfect? No. There were times that I abused as well. Mm -hmm. Even though it may be fewer times, there is my 5% or my 1% in the story. Mm -hmm. The journey has taught me to own it mm -hmm. and be in my truth. So I am able to say, it didn't work out with the father of my children because we were both not empowered to mm -hmm. survive in a marriage. It wasn't with absolute fault. It wasn't my absolute fault. Our culture mm -hmm. played a part in forcing us to be together. So I can't put it on him. There were elders deciding on our behalf what happened in our lives. So when I go down to the truth about what happened in my life, I have no mm -hmm. resentment for the men. I don't hate the individual. I hate the system that created mm -hmm. the condition, the system of patriarchy that says girls, good girls stay in their marriage. Mm -hmm. That say this is how we've always done it in the family. So it's that mm -hmm. system which allows men to be more so the journey has taught me to go down to the root cause. Mm -hmm. As individuals, we are all victims of a system that has expectations of us that are impossible. So mm -hmm. the journey has been interesting because now I'm looking at it from a point of a person who has learned. If mm -hmm. you were to ask me maybe 10 years ago, I'll say, oh, life is so hard. Life has ditched me, you know, blows and what. I'm now mm -hmm. very appreciative of everything that has happened in my life because I'm mm -hmm. now able to see the gift in it. So the journey has been interesting. I am on um, uh, step number five or step, they say I'm on the fifth floor. I am mm -hmm. 50, half century. And I still very, feel very um, energetic and mm -hmm. I feel like there's much more to be done. So each decade, I've been learning something about myself. 
And what mm-hmm. I can tell a young woman is the older you get, mm-hmm. the more um, the more sure you become or the more mm-hmm. opportunities you have to really live for yourself and not live for society. But it doesn't mm-hmm. have to. to be until you are old, we can still take lessons from those that are older than us and bring them to our youth and live better lives. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for me, yeah, the journey has been full of a lot of lessons. That's all I can say. Amazing lessons about myself, amazing lessons about my children and that Mm -hmm. I am actually in the Arctic and thriving. It's been so, so much, much mystery. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So much growth from you and your journey. And speaking of 10 years back, if you were to go back in time, Fran, and you saw your younger self, what advice would you give to young Francesca Mandeya? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down, slow down, slow down. Mm -hmm. And uh, love you unapologetically first. Mm -hmm. Love you and forgive you and commit to unconditionally loving you Mm -hmm. first. Delay marriage until you're sure what love is Mm -hmm. you know speaking of that i had a previous guest on the show fran and he was talking about his love life he's 60 but he went through a divorce his wife sadly passed away due to cancer and he was in love with this woman for 126 days 11 minutes that's how long he was with her and through his journey and he said that loving someone you don't have to actually explain it for you to love someone this person has to show it back and what are they showing for them to be there they have to be present they have to care for you they have to want to know whatever you're going through they want to share your pain they want to share your sorrows they want to share your happiness and for a 60 year old man to say this and this was his second chance to find love again it was very moving yeah. to me because mm-hmm. I'm young myself and it was powerful that somebody who saw a second chance in life, he had lost his whole family. At a point, mm-hmm. he felt like he was alone. The woman that he loved passed away due to cancer. He's a cancer survivor and it's something that I love to remind myself each and every day. Remember what your guests have told you. Remember what you are learning from your guest, Phyllis, because if you don't, who, how are you expecting other people to learn from it? And it's amazing yes. that, <laughs> it is, it is amazing that I'm also learning a lot from you right now. Mm. I'm learning a lot from you because I'm a young woman. I'm planning to make a change on this planet. I want my podcast to make a change of this planet because the podcast slogan is voicing the voiceless. That's why I love my oh. guests to talk. I want them to talk about their deepest feelings that they never mentioned to anyone. I love them to talk about some situations in life where they're too scared to talk about, or they just end up talking and forget that, oh my God, I was talking. That's what I want. And it's amazing. That's why I don't mind you talking all the way till the end of time, because I'm fascinated by your life. I'm fascinated by your experiences, and I'm fascinated by the amazing woman and mother, speaker, author, be a player that you are today and it's amazing and it's an honor francesca to have met you and before we end if you are in my shoes right now if you are in my shoes what questions would you have asked yourself that maybe i do not ask you Hmm. (laughs) what question (laughs) okay How, how do you balance um motherhood and otherhood. And how do you do that, actually, since you've brought it up? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, 
do you want me to ask you a question? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's sure, relevant you can. To you. Okay, um, well, it's an interesting, uh, I'll briefly answer that, that being a mother, it's like a lifetime career. Uh, mm-hmm. Once you're a mother, you are a mother until you die. So that's a, a job description that never ends. It, it just changes in its nature, uh, but it never ends. And one thing I found was I did not have time for myself as mm-hmm. I was looking after my kids. I think I did try to have my own time, but being a mother to three children and their their financial, emotional, and um, physical demands were so draining on me that I I am now feeling like it's only now that I'm feeling like I can do what I want with my money and Mm -hmm. I can... I can go on holiday and not think about where my kids are. So Mm -hmm. just to the mothers out there, as we go about living our dreams and wanting to make the change that we want to make uh, in life, living legacies, let us remember to take care of ourselves because we need to be serving people from a full cup in that Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything called balance, but just know who you are. That in the first place, you are Francesca before you are a mother. And um, before you go out there and serve other people, maybe to those that are not mothers, parents, um, really take good care of yourself physically, Mm -hmm. mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Make sure you have some activity that you do to take care mm-hmm. of yourself. That So then when you give yourself to the world, you are giving them the best service you can. I hope any single mother, mother, or even single dad that had that can learn from it and can capture or grasp something from Francesca's words today but thank you so much Francesca for joining us on 12 days of Christmas it's been a pleasure and an immense honor to have you here on Care Life podcast and we hope to have you next year and we can talk more about your book or your views about the society thank you so much for having me uh Phyllis and uh to all the listeners who will be tuning in to the podcast I hope that you spread the word, the good work that Phyllis is doing. I really appreciate you being a young woman and having this dream to make a difference in the world. You see, when we all unite in our uniqueness and share Mm -hmm. the gifts that we have to the world together, we can make a difference. You are making yours, I'm making mine. And I really Mm -hmm. appreciate you giving me a platform to exercise my voice and to share my voice with Africa and the rest of the world. Thank you so much, Francesca. Like I said, that's what the podcast stands for, voicing the voiceless and being the eyes to the blind because everybody needs a little bit of that to hear somebody else's voice and to see the world from another person's eyes. But if the viewers out there or the listeners might want to get in touch with you, might want to purchase your book, where can they find Ava? Oh, this book is in Amazon. On mm-hmm. Amazon, uh, just uh, look for Francesca Mandea, Mother Behold Thy Son. I have mm-hmm. seen that it's also in uh, book uh, stores, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, but that's in the US. I haven't checked in Africa because I didn't have that much distribution And I was looking at ways of getting it to Africa. But if somebody has access to Kindle, they can get it on Amazon Kindle or they can order it straight from Amazon. Uh, Some Mm -hmm. people in Africa, as we speak. So, and if anyone really wants it, they can, they can, if they want to sign one, they can email me, they can call me um, and I'll arrange to mail it to them. I also do that. They want to personal touch me. Email, social media, maybe? Uh, friendmandea at gmail.com. Social media, Instagram is Francesca Mandea. 
uh, mm-hmm. Facebook, it's at Mother Behold Thy Son, Francesca Mandea. I have a public page and an author page and uh, Twitter at Fran Mandea, although I'm not very active on Twitter. That's okay. I'll make sure that they find you, they order your book, and I'm pretty sure you'll be getting a lot of orders this Christmas and possibly next year. But thank you so much once again for joining us today and happy holidays to you and your family, Fran. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Asante sana. (laughs) Karibu. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed and loved today's interview with Francesca Mandea. All her links will be in the description down below and also my link, my link tree actually will be in the description down below where you can find all my other links to my social media, the YouTube and other places that the podcast is available. If you cried, ladies and gentlemen, it's okay, get a box of tissues. It's the holiday season and uh, stories can get to you. They can. And especially this one, it got to me and I'm pretty sure it's relatable for most of you out there. And before we end today's episode, I'd like for you as my listener right now to sit down and evaluate your life. Have you been hurt by somebody? Have you been violated by somebody? It's okay to talk about it. Keeping it locked up in your heart and feeling ever so bad about it is not okay. So just speak out and find help. Anyways, join me tomorrow for day 8 here at Kara Live. I'll be waiting for all of you. Once again, same place, same time. Goodbye.